Father, can an unbaptized priest be baptized after his ordination? An unbaptized priest be baptized after his ordination? Oh my goodness, what's going on? And what are the sources of the dogma? Only the councils of the Bible. Okay, we got a couple of things going on here. Um, I would need more information. Are you talking about an Orthodox Christian priest who was never baptized? I'm assuming that he was received by chrismation. And now you're asking if he can have that baptize that that incorrect reception corrected after his ordination. I mean, you have to go and talk. That's above my pay grade. I think you know, go, go talk to some, you know, very advanced spiritual fathers and how to deal with that, like in the monasteries or on Mount Athos, or uh, that's a difficult one. I don't know what to do with that. I mean, on the one hand, it's clear that. We're making a mistake when we don't receive people by baptism today because they're not even immersed. There's no triple immersion going on, and so there's no there's no form of baptism. There's no basis for economy, according to Saint Nicodemus and Saint Paisios and all uh, many other saints. So it's very very troubling and problematic, and so it's a mistake. That's very clear. Everybody knows that. I mean, who cares to know it? And follows the Holy Fathers, and then you have. What happens now that this person has been ordained and what happens after their ordination? Should they, you know, there's been cases of that. Okay, received by chrismation. So there's been cases of that. I remember um, there's been uh, those, um, even on Manathos by great elders, that uh, they, they determined to do that on Manathos. So it really upsets a lot of people because they don't see that as, Legitimate, they think it they in linear terms. You know, you've received the mystery, you should never go back and receive it. You know, that which you, sh you should have received it then, but now it's too late, don't do anything about it. You've already received, move on. That's the thinking. Uh, you know, whatever's done is done, but the Athenite fathers don't seem to think that. And so I kind of am troubled by, you know, Elder Parthenios of of St. Paul's Monastery, 50 years in abbot, disciple of saints, uh, venerable elder. St. Paisius called him, uh, referred to him in the following way. He said, there are many abbots, there's only one Parthenios. You know? So he basically said he's, he's exceptional uh, among the abbots. Uh, and so he, he's known to have, uh, have done this. And he, of course, published the book, I Confess One Baptism. Uh, and so... What do we do with that? Do we just say, well, whatever. He's an, el he's an elder. It doesn't matter. If I was a bishop, I'd be troubled. If I was a bishop, I would say, well, Elder Parthenios, what does he know that I don't know? What's going on here? Like, he doesn't have some special interest. He's not some, you know, he's not money to make. He's not, uh, he's not driven by, uh, you know, I don't know, vainglory because he's going to be have a big name in the world. Or something. None of that really makes sense. Why is he doing it? So I'd be, I'd be troubled if I was a bishop, if I was receiving people by chrismation and just not ignore, ignoring such great figures in the church as, as Elder Parthenios. I understand St. Paisios, Elder Emilianos, Elder Ephraim. All of them supported the idea that these errors should be corrected. What do I do as a priest? What do you do as a layman? What do you do when the saints and elders of our day say, this is an error that needs to be corrected. I, I, I'm troubled. I think we all should be. The fact that there are people, priests, bishops, who just utterly dismiss out of hand what the contemporary saints and elders teach troubles me. I get troubled. I say, how is it possible? What do I know? Do I have experience that they have? Did I have experience with the uncreated light? Do I have a, the, the knowledge of uh, a clairvoyant knowledge of things? Do I have any of that? No. Elder Ephraim was clairvoyant. Elder, Elder Ephraim was seen in the uncreated light. Same with uh, St. Paisios of the Holy Mountain. Uh, does that matter? What, what does it mean to be a theologian? What does it mean to be authoritative? What does it mean to have authority in the church? Because I, I have the administrative or clerical position. Or Yes, of course, there's an authority there to serve the mysteries. There's an authority to teach the faith. Uh, par excellence, the bishop teaches the faith. 
But do I have an authority directly from God, experiential authority that you see in the apostles and in all the great saints throughout the ages? That that face-to-face -face communion that saw with Moses, you know, that still is in the church, right? We have the Moses of our day are the saints like Paisios or Porfirios or Yaakovos or, you know, I mean, for the same reason that I would say to anybody who objects those saints, you're in delusion on the right. Oh, St. Paisio is not a saint. St. Porfirio is not a saint. St. Yaakov is not a saint because they didn't break off communion and become a zealot and, and go to the old calendars. They're not saints. That's delusional. Like, look at the lives of these men and saints. The un, the unending witness of the of thousands of Orthodox Christians to their sanctity and the miracles and the clairvoyance and the, the faithfulness and the prophecies and all the rest. No, 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 no. They didn't do, they didn't cut off. They didn't run. They didn't break. That's the only way before a council you have to do that. You must, you must. So, I mean, there's many things today that we're facing that we're saying, what's the answer? How do I answer this? Oh, I go to the saints. That's what we always do. We've always done that. What do they do in the 6th, 5th, 6th, 7th century? Go to St. Simeon the Stylite and ask him what to do about the war that's going to be, you know, the emperor literally would go, get on his cart and go way down to Antioch from Constantinople. It's like, you know, weeks and weeks of travel or whatever. St. Simeon, what should I do? You know, that's what the church has always done. They go to the saints and the, the patristic consensus and the in, in council, the saints speak. It was the saints in every ecumenical council that spoke, and the others said, Peter has spoken. Because he was holy, because he was a saint, because he was an illumined, not because he was legalistically, magically right, because he was a, you know, in the seat of Peter. It's nonsense, utterly nonsense. There's been many heretics in the seat of Peter, many heretics in the seat of Patriarch Constantinople, and all the rest. So what is it? The holiness of life is the ultimate authority in the church, right? Beyond anything else, we look to those to help us out of these difficult situations. And so if there are such men today that say, we're making a mistake, we need to correct it. What, who am I to say, ah, oh, no, just go about your business, no worries. How can I do that and be faithful to the patristic witness today? We have a living faith in orthodoxy. It's living, it's alive in the saints. We run to them. We're not, we don't have academic theologians as our, as our authorities. No matter how many PhDs you have, no matter how many books you wrote, you are not an authority in the church of Christ until you have experience of God. And you write from experience of the uncreated light. Then you can talk about authority. That's the authority of the church. That's what St. Gregory Palamas and his struggle against Barlam was all about. Right? That's what St. Isaac of Syria talks about. That's what Justin talks about. Justin, Justin and Popovich. It goes on and on and on. So ultimately, all these questions are begging that question and that answer. And not from me, who I'm just a donkey, and I don't know anything. I don't have any experience of anything. I, I'm barely able to repent every day and get up and say my prayers. Who am I, right? How can I say, oh, I think this. Who am I to say that? I don't know anything. The saints speak sit at their feet and listen. What do they say? Well, St. Paisio said, go get baptized to a priest that I know personally. You're not, you need to, St. Elder Milinos. All of you out there who say, well, I don't want that illiterate Ephraim. He doesn't know anything. Elder Milinos, the great educated Simono Petritis. For all of you who know, know what I'm talking about. He told a priest that I know in the, in the Greek guards diocese, you need to be baptized. Elder uh, uh, Parthenios, great. So there you go. What else can we say? You had a second part of the question there, and it was, what are the sources of the dogma, only the councils in the Bible? Sources of dogma that are, are exactly what we just talked about, actually. In council, the saints, following the, those before them, following the Holy Fathers, following the apostles, following Christ. This, the faith was once forever given to the church. There's no development of doctrine in the Orthodox Church. There's no new revelations in the Orthodox Church, like that, in other words, new revelations of the what God has given us in salvation or the economy of salvation, right? Nothing new that can be added or, you know, a new prophet's going to come or anything like that. 
are there revelations, personal revelations, of course, in other words, communion with God, but not in the sense of revelations of who Christ is and, and the dogma of the church. So the church in the saints throughout the ages speaks to the truth of the gospel many times in council, but many times just in their lives, and it's, it enters into the whole patristic consensus. Bible and tradition, one, uh, two parts of one river of divine revelation and the deposit of the faith. Not opposed, not one more than the other, all organically connected and lived and experienced and taught in the church. I see on this